John O'Kane covers some high school football and some wrestling. So we'll be talking a little grappling this morning. Uh, good morning, John. Good morning, Dave. Thanks for having me. What's happening, Oki? Awake yet or what, buddy? Yeah, absolutely. Let's absolutely. get started. Yeah, you got young kids. You're awake at like five in the morning, right? Exactly. Been awake all night. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about last night. You were out checking out uh, Bridgeton and Shawnee. Tell us a little bit about that game and and what went on there. Bridgeton actually had an eight seven halftime lead, right? Yeah, absolutely. Bridgeton gave Shawnee all they could handle. You know, going in, it kind of uh, it felt a little David and Goliath. You know, Shawnee dresses about one hundred and thirty kids for each game. They must just wow. drag kids out of the hallway to put them in <laughs> uniform. How do they get How do they get enough uniforms coach. for all them guys? Oh my goodness! Must, you must know, be a Must yeah. be a ten thousand dollar uniform bill. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the Bridgeton coaches are joking. They've only got twenty to twenty five guys in uniform. So just looking at it, it didn't. You know, it kind of had that feel, but Bridgeton did not did not flinch even a little. But Bulldogs played their butts off uh, up eight to seven at halftime. And I'll tell you, Shawnee had to be nervous. I know they came out and played well and kind of pulled away in the second half, won by a couple touchdowns. But Bridgeton gave them everything they could handle. How, how impressed were you with the Bulldogs? I mean, here's a team that started off zero and three, and we weren't even really sure if they were going to win a game this year. And all of a sudden, they rip off seven straight wins and make it to the South Jersey semifinals. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, for my money, I, I always tell people, Dave Allen, the uh, head coach there at Bridgeton, I, I, was, I covered his 100th win earlier this year. Uh, you know, for my money, Dave Allen's one of the best coaches around. Uh, you know, doesn't always have a ton of talent, but, but what he works with, and, and, you know, and, and the different things, he, he does an amazing job, puts an amazing product on the field. You know, even, even at 0-3, I, I wouldn't count Dave Allen out. And I'll tell you what, you know, Marquise Bell, you know, there's a lot of great players in South Jersey right now. Marquise Bell, the junior uh, wide out there, uh, plays defensively. He might, he might be the most exciting guy in South Jersey right now. He is just unbelievably fun to watch. Have you seen Bo Melton? Yeah, it's you know, <laughs> funny you said that because uh, I, I saw I did see him a few times, and I was just going to say, you know, two guys I might want to see. You know, the Horn brothers. Everybody, you know, some amazing players. But yeah. you know, get, I, I'd like to watch those juniors, Bo Melton, uh, Marquise Bell. For my money, I'll take watching those juniors all day. I'm excited to get another year of those guys here in South Jersey. I'll tell you what, you watch that Bell kid play basketball, man. He he can leap out of the gym. He's an exciting athlete for sure. Well, the stuff he does, they were sending three defenders everywhere he goes. And at one point, you know, not even stuff that shows up in the box score, but at one point he, he had a defender completely in front of him, literally jumps over the top of him, <laughs> takes it out of his hands. And then the touchdown catch, you could see it. There were three guys on him in the corner, and he tips it. He jumps out. Good luck. He jumps over all three of them, tips it to himself to where he knows he can catch it, and then one hands it for the touchdown. <laughs> it, was just, it was one of the best catches I've ever seen at any level. And he's a, he's a high jump champion too, right, in, in spring, spring track? I wouldn't put anything past him. You know, he's one of those he's one of those uh, you know, annoying guys who put any any sport in his hand. He probably he's probably he's probably a monster at ping pong too or something, you know. He's <laughs> like he's one of those guys that's just good at everything he does, I bet. But he's a phenomenal athlete, phenomenally nice kid, and I'm sure Coach Allen's thrilled to get him back for another year. How do you think he'd be as a wrestler? <laughs> I like his chances. He's a little long, he's pretty lean. I could see him cradling dudes from halfway across the mat. The uh I, I wouldn't put it past him. That that one seventy one class or something like that? Exactly. Nice, tall, lanky, 171-pounder. A lot of guys hate wrestling guys like that. <laughs> um, talk a little bit about Buna. I'm sure you've seen them a little bit this year. and uh, Great year for the Chiefs. Obviously, they did, they came up a little bit short in their quest for a berth in the finals, but uh, really, a, a, really a, a nice two-year run for those guys. Yeah, I'll tell you, they were a different team when Sam Crouch came back because everybody knows, you know, Quadir Albright kind of a change of pace back. You know, he kind of hides behind his blockers, and he's just, you know, unbelievably elusive in the open field. He's the last guy you want to see in the open field. You know, he's a lot of guys tackling air with him. And then Crouch comes back and he gives you that, you know, kind of thunder and lightning aspect where he can just – he's just going to run through you. You know what I mean? And uh, combine that, I love their line. Uh, Rainier's a, a tough quarterback there under center. Uh, but Antonio Rodriguez and the guys in the line, I mean, those guys can get after the ball. Yeah, you know, you know there's another team that had a really nice season. You're right. It, it was kind of funny. I was at the Cedar Creek game last night, and uh... – Bo Melton rips off this seventy-yard touchdown run, and he's about thirty yards into it, and and I see the free safety back there, you know, standing on about the twenty-five yard line, and I'm like, man, I feel bad for this kid. <laughs> Melton <laughs> makes one one little shoulder juke, cuts it all the way back inside, and this kid was just he had no chance. Absolutely, and you know, a lot of people in Egg City and the surrounding areas, and there's another Melton too, by the way, coming up the ranks, which is kind of a scary thought. Jeez. But uh, <laughs> you know, everybody in the area has kind of known what he's kind of capable of, and I think he kind of maybe even nationally put himself on the map against Middle Township and the 
you know, that play that, that made the top 10 on ESPN and everything where he right. literally drug a defender for five to 10 yards. Uh, I mean, he is, he, you're right. He's an exciting player. You know, in a 14 to nine game, I wasn't there. I, you know, I looked like an amazing game following you guys on Twitter. Yeah, it was but, pretty uh, exciting. You know, in a four, in a fourteen to nine game, I don't know how much more you can do than two touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, <laughs> you know, was he kicking extra points too last night? Or? No, no, they got they got Pat Moran over there for that. He's he's a heck of a kicker. So, uh, oh, that's right, don't, my buddy Pat Moran. Yeah, don't Gally don't Township be shortchanging my boy Pat Moran over there. That's a re- former wrestler, Galley Township Middle School. There that's you go, <laughs> GTMS. <laughs> that's right. We're talking with uh, John O'Kane from the Press Atlantic City. Uh, talking some football, and uh, let's get into a little bit of high school wrestling. I know this is kind of your passion and uh, one of mine as well. I'll be seeing you out there on, on some of these long Saturday tournaments. Uh, right. Give a, give us, our fans, a little preview of uh, what's coming up this year. Who should we be uh, keeping an eye out on? I know St. Augustine's loaded. Uh, who else are you looking at this year? Yeah, you're right. The, uh, I always love it. You know, Everybody kind of talks about the guys we lost. And, and, you know, there was some amazing wrestlers last year. My buddy uh, C.J. Lafragola uh, up at Brown. Uh, he, he was an animal. Uh, Oh my gosh! And another guy, another annoying guy in any sport. You know, he's a ping pong monster. He'd probably kick you butt at bowling. The, yeah, uh, football, know, baseball, baseball, wrestling. He was an outstanding athlete. Absolutely. And then my my buddy uh, Pat Darcy uh, having you know he already finished. He already has a top three up at uh, the uh, the Binghamton Open for Princeton. So he's doing a nice job. He's already starting for them at 125 pounds. Uh, but yeah, it's always kind of exciting to see that new group come in and who's going to be the next kind of. You know, top guy, and and you're right, St. Augustine Prep right now. This might be the best team. Yeah, set it for a couple years in a row now. It seems like starting with kind of Jack Clark and those guys, they were probably even a little bit better last year. And, and this might be ever put on the mat. Uh, you know, it's a, and you know, it's kind of spinning forward from football. A couple football guys, Jimmy Brady, Jose Tabora, uh, those guys are kind of huge up top. They've got some nice big guys, Ryan Lynn, uh, and then they've an incredible class of uh, underclassmen. And then you got Reed White. Uh, Nick Clark, those guys both committed to wrestle at Campbell University, and they are just going to be deep and brutal to match up with. They they could have a really special season there at St. Augustine Prep wrestling wise. Yeah, I know we we talked uh, seeing each other on the football fields throughout the fall, and and every time I see you, you're like, oh yeah, St. Augustine Prep wrestling, man, I can't wait for these guys. Wait till you see these guys. So uh, tell us a little bit about that squad and uh, and you know how how difficult they're going to be to match up with in the Cape Atlantic League. I, I don't know if there's anybody who can really stay with them in the Cal. That's what I mean. You know, I, to be honest with you, and I hate to say it, but I, I don't see anybody touching them in the cow. Uh, you know, there's going to be some nice wrestlers, some nice teams, things like that. But, in, in, you know, the Cape Atlantic League, I think they've got bigger fish to fry. Um, they're just unbelievable this year. They really they didn't lose a whole heck of a lot. Um, and it just depth throughout the lineup. I mean, their they're biggest competition, you know, they're at that, that special kind of point where competition is in the own, their, their own room. I mean, they've got they have a freshman class coming in and some sophomores that were backing up last year. Uh, you know, guys like Steven Schwab and Coleman and these guys that were freshmen and sophomores last year, uh, and they brought in, uh, you know, another talented group. They're going to have talented guys that, that have a tough time cracking the lineup, guys that could be like, you know, district place winner types. They're going to have a tough time even cracking the lineup up there. They've got a young Krause brother coming in. Uh, his older brother, uh, Connor, was really, really talented at Oakcrest, and this is Callisto coming in at St. Augustine, and he's an unbelievable wrestler. I got to see him firsthand at the middle school level. He is, he is going to come right into uh, – to, to making things happen, and like I said, they've just got they've got depth that that no team in this area at least can match up with. Give, give us some uh, some guys you might be on the lookout for. I know uh, you know Absagami had a couple guys do do real well in districts, and you know Ocean City. Some of these teams that are are well known for good wrestling programs. You know, e- even Mainland's kind of jumping up and, and producing some good wrestlers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm excited. I think Asagami, you know, they've kind of had some lean years here, but I'm excited to see what they do this year. They're starting to kind of fill out their lineup and get a little bit of depth back. Uh, you know, they have. They've had a, they've had a handful of talented wrestlers throughout. Uh, they always have some tough kids. Asagami's known for its toughness going, you know, back you know before my days. Um, and they're going to be tough, you know, led by James Geigold, uh, who got out of districts last year. They've got some tough guys coming back. Uh, some good young guys coming up, uh, young Nicky Martin, young Nick Carrera, a couple freshmen that might be able to contribute right away. Uh, quarterback Andrew Marcucci, another buddy, uh, is going to step right in and be a tough wrestler there in the middle. Uh, they do, and I'm, I hate to leave guys out, but I, I know they're, they're going to be pretty tough. Uh, yeah, you're right, Mainland's got, a, again, a couple football players, uh, Colin Roberts. Uh, unfortunately, I'm interested to see what happens with Justin Bishop there at Mainland. I know he had a pretty bad, uh, I, I want to say shoulder separation, but definitely a shoulder injury there in their uh, – their last regular season game before the uh, the playoff game. Yeah, he, he um, might not be able to get going until maybe mid-January, so we'll, we'll see how that works out. 
Yeah, I'd hate to see, you know, you hate to see that, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see him miss time. Uh, you know, Millville should have a few tough guys back. Uh, Ocean City with a few individuals and things like that. Um, Holy Spirit, uh, young Timmy Fitzpatrick's going to be a nice wrestler again this year. He was kind of, you know, he got the benefits of, of rolling around and working out with, with Pat Darcy a lot last year. Um, so there, there is. There's going to be a lot of nice individual guys stepping up this year. The people, uh, you know, uh, Jason Kenzie, a couple EHT guys. I'm forgetting EHT here. Jason Kenzie got there at EHT. Yep. Uh, they've got a couple nice young guys back. Connor Agostino should make a nice run this year. Um, so it is, you know, we lose Darcy, lose lots of gold, we lose a couple other talented seniors, but you know how wrestling is. It's always kind of fun to see who's putting in the work and is going to step up and be the next big time guy. Sure. I, I think they're going to get started next week. So we'll be looking forward to some high school wrestling and, uh, basketball, all those winter sports, swimming, all that stuff getting started here around Thanksgiving with their, uh, preseason, uh, practice workouts. So, uh, good stuff, Oak. Thanks for joining us and we'll catch up to you soon. We'll be talking a, a lot of high school wrestling this winter. Dave, always fun talking wrestling, football with a couple of Irishmen. I love it. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks, Oak. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. All right. That was John O'Kane from the Press of Atlantic City. Good stuff.